today. Uh, so I'm Jerry and I'm here with Mark and Barry. Hi guys. Hi Jerry. Hi, Hi Mark. Hi Jerry. Hi Barry. Hello everyone. Hi everyone. Uh, can I give a shout to the wife and kids who are watching as well? <laughs> no shame. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, okay, so since April um, this year we've been podcasting a Celtic A to Z, just going through all the, the great players, great figures, great games, iconic moments of our magical and unbroken history. Uh, today we're going to focus on our, our very proud record in the Scottish Cup. We're already the most successful club in the competition's history. And By some distance. Yeah, about a decent, a decent margin, yeah. Uh, and tomorrow we're going for our 40th triumph. So in our episodes, we normally each nominate a player or a game, an artefact or a wild card or something, uh, make a case for it to go into our A to Z. Today we're doing it slightly differently. Um, we're each going to propose a couple of nominations. Um, but also take you through all our Scottish Cup triumphs as well and hopefully reach a consensus on what's the, the greatest Celtic Scottish Cup moment. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So Which is going to be very much argued. <laughs> <laughs> I know, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll kind of open that up to you, to you as well. We'll let us know if we, if we get that right or horribly wrong. Uh, so I've explained that properly, boys. Is that kind of... Yeah, it's a good overview, Jerry, yeah. what we do. Good, OK, cool. Uh, let's make a start then. So we'll kick off with a nomination before we start taking you through some of the history. So Barry, I think, come to Yeah, first. I'm going to do the first nomination. So my first nomination is the most recent one that we're going to speak about in today's podcast. And it's from 2017. I mean, I'm starting with the big gun here. I'm starting with you know, <laughs> the, the pivotal moment in the last few years. The game that capped off the Invincible treble. Yeah. But before I talk about that, let's go back a year. So this put us in a bit of context. We had a horrible, horrible afternoon at Hampden Park. We lost in penalties to Rangers. The yes. missed penalty was from the big Australian Tom Rogic. <laughs> yep. And I mean, it was heartbreaking. It was gutting. I just felt, you know, where are we going from here at this point? And then in that summer, Brendan Rogers comes in and the club just has a... It's just renewed almost. It was such a great feeling. There's a big change, club. isn't there? Yeah. It's kind of more yeah. risk, isn't it? Aye, it's... We've talked, I guess, throughout the series about defining moments in the club's history, and that, that's obviously one of the most recent Absolutely. ones, I guess. And then, as I say, not to go on too much about it, but then we go forward a year, and we've got the same player, you know, Tom Rogic, scoring the winning goal, and a team which has just been completely reju regenerated, rejuvenated, even. Yeah. And it's just it's a memory that will just live with me for as long as I, as long <laughs> as I live. Um, and I remember I could see it in my mind's eye, Tom Rogic with that ball running through in the last minute. Yeah. Sticking it at the back of the net. You think he's too, he's, he's, just, he's too wide? He's too wide. I think I was trying to square it. Square it. My limited yeah. knowledge. <laughs> and the thing as well about that cup final as well, Aberdeen were clearly the second best team in the country oh, yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah. They, had a, they were a good team. You're talking Johnny Hayes, you know, Kenny McLean, Niall McGinn. You know, they were a proper solid team. Yep. Don't get wrong, Celtic were phenomenal that year, miles better than everybody else. Right. But it was a proper occasion. And I remember being there thinking, well, this is great. You know, we've got the two best teams in the country competing for the final. Well, the thing is, I mean, Aberdeen, they hadn't really laid a glove on us, albeit, you know, you're right, they were second, but I think we'd beat them like, four times in the league. We beat them in the League Cup. But you're right, that yeah. was, you felt that was their moment. Obviously, they went 1-0 up as well. And they did that glorious mm -hmm. moment of a an hour into the game where they could have taken the lead. But then, mm. the last 10 minutes is just wave after wave after wave of Celtic attack. And Celtic probably could have ended up winning that game 5 or 6-1 if mm -hmm. Scott Sinclair had shooting boots on that oh, day. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, for me, the reason I'm nominated is just it was so emotional. I remember I was pretty much in tears at the final whistle. <laughs> I'm getting emotional now just even thinking about it. It's just, it's just oh, it was so happy just compared to where we'd been the year before and where, you know, the future at that point just looked so bright. And oh, I love it, I love it, I love it so much. That's a great nomination. I think it's that moment when you realise you're loving through Celtic history, yeah. isn't it? Well, an undefeated treble, you know, the invincible treble, it's highly unlikely we're going to see that again. So you're right, it's a, it's a pretty special one. And that moment with Tommy Rogic, right, the, the, the legend of lightning striking ah, well, the park. Like, I mean, it was, a horrible, <laughs> it was a strange, strange day because you had the weather, which is like sunshine, and then it was, you know, a storm, basically, and then you had the lightning coming in after we scored. And then you've got the bit with, you know, Kieran Tierney going off as well and then come back on to grab the trophy. Yep. It's just, it's just fairy tale stuff. That doped up to the eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Running up the stairs at Hamden High. Yeah, no, it's, it, it, was, it was it was a great moment, and I guess uh, that was the first of this great run of the fact. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah hopefully, we, hopefully we can yeah sort it out tomorrow and complete that quadruple. Excellent. Okay, so twenty seventeen then, uh, and that Tommy Rogic goal. That's the the first nomination. I'm going to take you through, I guess the 
the early years of the club now and start our initial successes in the Scottish Cup, so leading up to the First World War. Um, the first final uh, we were in was actually the 88-89 season, so the season of our formation, we, we ended up getting beat with third Lanark in the final, but reaching it's not a bad start. Good going for it, wasn't it? Yeah, first year you're yeah, yeah, yeah. too much. Um, but yeah, three years later we have our first trophy, um, uh, 1892 Scottish Cup, we beat Queen's Park 5-1. And one of the early greats of the club, Sandy McMahon, gets a hat trick that day. Oh, did he? Well, that, yeah, there's, there seems to be some debate. Well, my, my, my Bible, my Celtic 95 96 <laughs> pocket annual suggests that there's two goals from Sandy McMahon and our own goal. And our own so, goal. Man. I don't think there's any footage just of it, so, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make your own mind. The Jubilee Scores panel stop making a decision on it. Give him the benefit of give, <laughs> give him his hat trick, surely. Hat but what a player, Sandy McMahon, though. The oh, yeah. Goals yeah. Goals. yeah, you're right, one of the kind of early superstars of. Of Celtic, the game was actually replayed, so we, we actually beat them one 0 um, in the first final, and it was ordered to be replayed because of crowd encroachment. Um, and then we beat them five one, so you know, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit odd uh, that you play a game, we get a result, and then say that nah, play yeah. again. I guess that happened. Uh, a few years later, so eighteen ninety nine, the first Old Firm final, uh, we won two 0 against Rangers. So not a bad way to end the century, I suppose. Uh, and then retain it the following year, four three we. Queen's Park Seven goal thriller Yeah it's a, it's a cracker And I think it's We've said before On our series I think in, in those early years The Scottish Cup's Probably the main event uh, Rather than the league Yeah the league's still know. In its infancy isn't it Really just get, yeah. getting going And I think You know There's amateur teams Like Queen's Park uh, We talked about Celtic Becoming professional In the mid 1890s And that kind of Early boardroom wrangle And that But uh, Queen's Park Really leaving teams like this The amateur teams Are still you know, very much a force in the Scottish Cup, yeah. not so much in the I league. I mean, the, the, the Scottish Cup is your ambition at the start of the season at that time, and yeah. that's what you want to win. Yeah. Certainly up until probably the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so lost a couple of finals in the, the early years of the um, the 20th century, 102. Yeah. Uh, then another Old Firm final, 1904, against Rangers, beating 3-2. It's a Jimmy Quinn hat-trick. I think I was a real hat trick. I, I, I've got no complaints about that one. No, I've, I've, I've spoken to the people, and it's a genuine hat trick. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, so yeah. Jimmy Quinn, you know what I mean? A hat trick and a, and a final against Rangers. That's that's brilliant. So you missing some, really? Yeah. The Croy Express is that not right from our nicknames episode? We did uh, uh, had a wee bit of nicknames. Yeah. I think the Croy Express is one of them. <laughs> um, yep. So a couple of back to back wins: 0708, 3 0 against Hearts, five one again v St Mirren. Uh, and then a very interesting year, 1909. I um, don't know if you are aware of what happened. Was there a <laughs> slight disturbance at some point? <laughs> the I game? think that's what you could maybe call it, yeah. So there was there was two games, I think it was two each first game and then one each. Uh, and then there was a riot. This is against <laughs> Rangers, yeah. Yeah, yeah against yeah. Rangers and, and the cup was withheld. So 1909, officially there's no winner. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, so, I've read before that it was the fans rather than a riot between the supporters, it was more a riot against the SFA because and the clubs themselves. Because if supporters believe that they were fixing the result, so we could just have a final and another final and another final just to make more money. To make more money. <laughs> <laughs> Which is mm. not impossible. I suppose, yeah. Well. Particularly in those early days, I'm sure there was a few shenanigans going I on at certain places. I think that's where the, the term old firm what started to come out, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was immediately on that period, the suggestion that they were in the same. Yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, so 1909. Who knows who's who is to blame or what exactly went on there? It's probably their fault. Um but then history is proven it's probably their fault. Well, let's leave that there, Barry. <laughs> uh, a great era for the club though, that, that kind of six in a row going into the nineteen tens, when a few more cups leading up to the outbreak of the First World War. So nineteen eleven beat Hamilton two 0 uh, following year two 0 against Clyde. And then 1914 against Hibs, 4-1. And you just look at the names in that team, in that great six in a row team. Patsy Gallagher, Jimmy McMenemy, Ali McNeil. These are guys we've, we've spoke about on the podcast, yeah. just proper legends of the club. You know, guys like McMenemy, you know, gave his whole career to Celtic and you know, was effectively manager in the 30s as well. Um, so it's... Yeah, that's right. And the cups are so important because they're going towards, fingers crossed, at another... One tomorrow. Well, that's it. They, they, all, they all count. They all count. I know you're right. They're, they're numbers, but one through nine or something there. So yeah, so important for us. Forty tomorrow. Um, okay, so leave the the history ones for a moment. I'll, I'll throw in the the second nomination, and I'm going to nominate uh, 2001, the 2000 2001 season, which is probably my favourite. Season, yeah, <laughs> yeah I love in it. terms it's, of Celtic history, the sun shone every single day. <laughs> that, <did>. that season, <laughs> I was 18, 19 years old. Yeah, 
what's not to love. You know, it's a great period. Like I mean, you're 18, 19, you've got a great Celtic team to support as yep. well because like, it just makes all the difference. After years of not having a great one. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was nice. Well, exactly, yeah, because you grew up in the 90s and you know, obviously we'll get to the 90s at some point. There's not a lot of success there. Um, but yeah, so Martin O'Neill coming in. Barry, you talked about 2016 to 2017 mm. and I guess just taking it from that, mm. that kind of low moment. Um, we'd lost the league with what you know twenty odd points. Uh, the year twenty one points. Aye. Yeah, um, and then Martin O'Neill comes in, obviously turns it around. So, I'm not sure anything will surpass that for me. If you look at the team we had, guys, you know Henry Larson, obviously, um, Lambert, Sutton, Maravchik, Lennon, Thompson. I mean, they're all top quality European yeah. players. Yeah. And defenders. I mean, we had real defenders back then: Mialbi, Valharan, Ramon Vega. Ramon Vega. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm class Ramon Vega as a top quality defender. Yeah. He was good <laughs> for six months. He's he's such a style. Aye. Uh, but just you know, big rock solid guys and in the back. You know, guys like Boyd as well. You know, so experienced. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's it. We had Alan Stubbs and Tom Boyd in the bench that day. Mm-hmm. I think Stubbs hardly played that season. Yeah, so it's real, I guess, quality all over the park. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, we'd won the league at a canter. Some great games along the way as well. No less the the six two game. The guy was no defenders. That one, uh, brilliant. Had a great t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're going for our first treble since Jock Steen and. I guess the, the Lisbon Lions team for 1969. Uh, in truth, it's probably never really in doubt. You know, we're. No, you, you say that, but you never know. It's a one off cup game, isn't it? It's a cliche, isn't yeah. it? But you're right. We've yeah. been there before. You know, yeah. games would be fine. But, but I, know you, I know what you mean. Our confidence was so high that day. Yeah. The I team mean, was so good. That... And we get, you know, so Mike Murray obviously gets a, the first goal. He actually didn't start. He came on for Moravchik. Uh, I remember. It's a, I remember my recollection of that game is actually being in the pub, which I probably shouldn't say, but <laughs> being in the pub, absolutely rammed full of people. It chairs everywhere, you know, big screen. And Matt Namara, I remember seeing the ball going through to him. And I stood up on a seat. <laughs> <laughs> and I blocked the view for about 30 people in the world. <laughs> so we all missed, never we all missed the opening goal. I felt really bad about that after it. But uh, it was. This is your opportunity moment. to apologise if anyone's apologised for nothing. Because <laughs> <laughs> remember, Mike Namar as well scored a double a couple of weeks earlier at Easter Road as well. He did 5 2. I did have a bit of form as goal scoring. Yeah. And uh, I remember the Hibs manager at the time saying, you know, they'd, they'd kind of plan to contend with Maravchik, they knew we were going to play Maravchik, and then. When he went off and we brought McNamara on, it just becomes a totally different game. So yeah, totally different did. players doing different things. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. Um, so McNamara gets the first goal and then second half a double from from Henrik three 0 and it, yeah, pretty pretty comprehensive uh, victory. I think the celebration, end. like you're saying, it being eighteen nineteen, it felt like you were out, you know, a semi final or a final on every week yeah. at that point, and you could go out and celebrate. You know? <laughs> it's like you say, you know, it was just such a great great period, you know, growing up. Yeah, I actually. Phoned in, so I think we worked together. Oh, we point. did work yeah. together. Yeah, you phoned in sick. I didn't have the guts to phone in sick, so I got your friend to do it for me and pretend she was my mum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then turned up at work the next day and we're like, I so I sit with you, Barry. I, 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 I. I'm over it now, though. It's all right. I'm all right. It's, it's fine. <laughs> up all night, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, phone in sick for the, the pub toilet. There's yeah. bedlam going on outside. <laughs> I think that was probably possibly the first day I experienced a huddle in the street as well, stopping traffic for a huddle. And I've done huddles all over the world now, but I think that was the first one. <laughs> so, very good times. Good memories. Yep. Okay, so um, we'll move on. Our next successes, I guess, in the, the interwar years. Um, it's not as glorious a period for Celtic. Um, picking up after World War One. Next success comes 1923, uh, we Hibs 1-0 and then a couple of years later we're back uh, 2-1 against Dundee. It's one of the most legendary moments in our history, which we'll hear about a little later. Look yep. um, also, interesting note, that was our 11th success um, and so that at that point we overtake Queen's Park and from then on we are the most successful club. In the Scottish Cup, so almost a hundred years on, we've been the most successful team. And Queen's Park are still sore about it. Probably, yeah. <laughs> they, they never really recovered. From that. <laughs> you don't hear much about it. Um, yeah, a few years later, 1927, 3-1 v East Fife, East Fife in a Scottish Cup mm-hmm. final. Yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? I think you see that a lot in the early days, though. Like yeah. you say, wins against Clyde and you know Clyde. Hamilton and so forth. Yeah, eighty odd thousand people at the game as well. Celtic East Fife. Mm. Celtic <laughs> lost a Scottish <laughs> Cup tie at Athlone one time. Yeah, that's <laughs> I don't remember you bringing that up. Um, yeah, so moving into the 30s now, 1931, uh, 4-2 against Motherwell. Um, and we've spoken about this earlier in our series too, but there's a there's a great team photo of that day with the Scottish Cup and 
It's got guys like Jimmy, Jimmy McGrory, John Thompson, Peter Scarf, Chick Geatons, Willie Mealy, of course, is in there. It's just a it's a really iconic image, you know, all, all these guys together and winning the cup. And yeah. so Plus with sadness as well, though, of talking yeah. guys like Thompson and Peter Scarf, who died at really yeah. young ages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just in the, yeah, in the coming years, that was the kind of last... I guess that 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 team was together. Obviously, it's the following season. I guess the tragedy uh, with, with John Thompson. Um, yeah. So a few years later, another final, one uh, 0 against Motherwell, and then nineteen thirty seven, we beat Aberdeen two one. And does anybody know why that game's particularly significant? A record attendance. It is. It's a, it's a European record, so not only a, a Scottish or a British record. It's actually it's the largest crowd ever for a European football match. 147,000 people. <laughs> I mean, you can't, it's hard to get your head around that, isn't that's, it? You know, That's just insane. I know you... I mean, we come from near Glasgow and you see where Hamden is. I mean, it's quite a small stadium now, relatively speaking, but trying to imagine, you know, almost 150,000 people in that space, it's just... That's I mean, wonderful. Can you imagine you're using the tide at half time? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. to the game. <laughs> I know, tragic. Um... But yeah, so the, happily we won it. I mean, it would be a pretty sour note if we'd, if we'd lost that game. Interestingly, yeah. it's not, not Celtic related, but I mean, some of the attendances at that period are just... I mean, even when Celtic got involved, I was looking at a final. It's a bit later on, I think it's actually in the late 50s or early 60s, and there's a final between Motherwell and Dundee, and 130,000 people turned up for it. And mm. I'm trying to get my head around it. Well, not 130,000 people in that one. <laughs> <laughs> all these people are. <laughs> who, who goes yeah. to the game? Is it just the day out? We just go to the Scottish Cup final regardless of who's playing? Maybe, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, well, good on them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're right, there's, there's a period, there's about a 30, 40 year period where there was like over 100,000 folk at hand in finals, or 90, 100,000 folk, and um, yeah, it's, it's kind of glory days of Scottish football almost. Um, okay, so that, that kind of takes us up to the, the Second World War then, so we'll, we'll pause there for a moment and get our, our third nomination. Mark, come to you. Thanks, Jerry. So, my nomination is for the 95 Scottish Cup final. So this is a game where we, we beat Airdrie 1 0. Big Pierre scores in the ninth minute. It's a classic. It is. <laughs> it's not a football classic. No. <laughs> it's a classic Pierre goal. You know, big ball in the box. It's a great uh, Put, Tosh, Tosh McKinley, isn't it? It's yeah. What are yards? I love the goal itself, it's great. The cross and the header yeah. are brilliant, but just me generally. I watched the full game recently and there's barely two passes put together. I, the I think game. it was a high pressure game because you yeah. think November. Previous year, you know, we lose a cup final to Raith Rovers. I'm sure that was the players back of their minds. Airdrie, no harm to them, weren't renowned for their style of football. I mean, I think what they call it agricultural style <laughs> would be awesome. maybe a compliment <laughs> to, to the fair that Airdrie team. I think Aye. was it 100 yellow cards he got? And I think, <laughs> that, that I love them brutal, yeah. I mean, um, let's be honest. <laughs> so it was, it was a huge final because it's the first trophy after the takeover in '94. Mm-hmm. We had six years without a trophy, which is just incredible. And in, you know, I know we went periods longer than that without it, but you know, in a modern sense, that's a long time. In your formative years as a yeah. Celtic fan, it's an eternity. Yeah, for, <laughs> really, for us, I mean, it was pretty much our yeah. childhood was watching Celtic get beat. <laughs> and what, yeah, and I remember feeling quite confident that game, and my dad reminded me, like, well, you know, let's just wait and see. Yep. Uh, and you can see how much the game meant. You think at full time, you've got you know Peter Grant and Pompey staying in tears. Yeah. You know, those iconic images from the Tommy game. Tommy Burns as well. Yeah, yeah. it just meant for anyone you wanted to be Tommy Burns to win that final. And I think there's a quote from Pierre saying that he didn't know how much it meant to him until he saw the emotion mm. on the pitch. It was, I think it was a relief, wasn't it? We got our first trophy. Um, and uh, it took us forward. It was huge. I mean, and I remember when we've been back, that was the year at Hamden, but we've been back to Celtic Park the following season. I mean, and there was, there was this, the sheer issue and so forth. But Celtic basically sold out their season tickets yep. for, for the part of the stadium that they had built. Yeah. And I remember my dad tried to get season tickets and we'd, he'd, we'd never had one before at that point and we couldn't get them. Um, but the first day, the first game back after that was a friendly against Newcastle and Ross Stewart was there yeah. and we were showing off like the that Scottish Cup yeah. and it was a glorious day. Um, yeah. And it just that whole feeling again was, just got done. Well, there was an advert that Celtic took out in the, the media and it was said, this is the beginning. Mm. Yep. That sense that, you know, to think that no accurate learning quote in 2011, I, that idea, this is we got something it, good. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of feels as if it's a birth of modern Celtic. At that point, 95, we've been through our difficult period in the 90s. We are, we're going back to where we belong. And actually, there was a really nice wee touch because Parky Bonner, although he didn't play that game, was actually Jockstein's last ever sign at Celtic. So it's Jockstein's right. last ever sign that's still involved. And mm-hmm. So you get that nice wee bridge between you know the glory years and what we're going to then look forward to, to further success. I'd put a wee shout out to Peter Grant as well, because he played that whole game injured. Yeah. And he had like stitches yeah. in his leg. Just shows you his commitment, isn't it? Yeah. 
I guess just bled Celtic. That day, literally, that day. <laughs> Celtic. And yeah. you think between the 89 95, don't win anything, but the following six years in from 95, after you know the club gets back in its feet, uh, seven trophies, including the the one you so it just shows you how that period we're starting to get yeah. more success we've got the glory boys in there as well 97, 98 right. and just to sort of finish there's a, a great story about Gordon Marshall who perhaps wasn't the greatest ever keeper um, he would be I'd, I'd have him in goals the more Gordon Marshall was a great story about him that at full time he had a winner's medal and Brian O'Neill hadn't been able to play because he'd been injured and he was quite emotional about it and yep. Gordon Marshall gave him his winner's medal so fair play to Gordon Marshall I think that's a story I've got to say Gordon Marshall must be a fair age now though I'm not sure I'd pick him now no stick with Connor. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, I think it just shows a nice it's, it was a great it's a great memory because it's Tommy Burns with the trophy and it just feels for us maybe our generation this was the start of something good for us well it's, and you're right I think I mean 25 years since then you're right Barry you think you said this a few weeks ago we have been the dominant force in Scottish football over the last 25 years obviously there's been some ups and downs in there but you know that is the start of the, the if, you mean, if you were to think about it I mean, it feels like a kind of year zero type moment that yep. this is a you know we were back you know, to where we should be excellent okay cheers Mark um, okay so moving on from second world war then it's this is a, a kind of less than successful period in our history the, the post world war two years i think we were rank rotten <laughs> i think that's a technical term <laughs> <laughs> um we did win in 1951 um another final wee mother curiously so one nil against mother um 1954 is, i mean there's still i guess a few a couple of cup successes in there uh two one against aberdeen uh yeah. Jock's Dean captain that day, so yeah. that's obviously his. Sean Fallon goal. That's right, Sean Fallon, yeah. Really the team. Yeah, these are great, you're right, just great names, great great Celtic men. Um, that was 1954. We actually didn't win another Scottish Cup for 11 years, 1965. Um, but I think it would be remiss of us not to mention another Cup final in those intervening years, <laughs> which is the 1957 League Cup final. Yeah, but it's one of our finest ever moments. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, like you say, it's a long spell, eleven years, not to win the Scottish Cup, and they did make quite a few finals in between then, just well, to did, go over yeah. the line. But <laughs> we just swap it for that one League Cup final. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is what I'm getting at. So, you know, a, a cup final against Rangers it, it is always a big occasion, and winning a cup final against Rangers is just such a sweet moment. But seven one <laughs> in a cup final against Rangers. Can't believe it. You think you talk about period? It's a shame you guys like Charlie Tully and you're. Really mm-hmm. mocking like these legendary players who maybe didn't play in the most successful era, but yeah, the medal collections aren't great. Yeah, but they've still got that. You know, they've got those cups, which is lovely. You know, they're still part of our success, which is yep. great. They all they all count to it. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, so then as I say, you're right. We did lost a few finals in the early sixties. So I guess I mean it could have. We were making finals. Just, yeah, um, I mean you've got the sixty one final for instance that Jock Steen was a manager of Dunfermline. Yep. Um, and, I mean, obviously, Jock Steen was a football genius as a manager, so there's maybe no shame in losing that, in that <laughs> yeah. particular game. But they were still getting there; they just couldn't get over the go over the line. Same yeah. again, sixty-three. Yep, um, and we we're finishing like mid-table as well around this time as well. It's kind of you know seventh, eighth. Yeah, I mean, it's not the, the place. period. Yeah. yeah, but then as I say, you know, nineteen sixty-five, everything kind of changes, mm-hmm. and uh, I know we'll I come on to talk about this in a moment as well, but. Uh, very much the start of an era, uh, the, you know, the Lisbon Lions, Jock Steen coming in um, that season, we win the, the 65 Cup. A um, couple of years later, we all know what happened, uh, 1967, the only Scottish Cup which forms part of a quadruple, beating Aberdeen 2-0 to obviously round off being European Champions, League winners, League Cup winners as well. It's not bad, is it? Yeah, it's, it's a good season, yeah, it's up there. <laughs> um, and then closing out the, the decade, um, another treble actually, 1969. 4-0 against Rangers I watched the footage of that game recently as yeah. well it's, I mean it's some hiding uh, that, <laughs> 4-0 in a cup final I mean 7-1 obviously is one thing but even 4-0 in a cup final against Rangers that's a it's a great win especially because you know Scottish Cup going for the treble yeah. and they're all great uh, goals I think George Conley got a goal that day it's just going down the keeper it's uh, and to beat Rangers in the final yeah, I mean, tops it off. It's just a magnificent football team. There's no good other way to put it. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's a, I mean, it's right at the height of that that team, obviously Jimmy Johnson and stuff. So, um, and, I mean, that's our last final. Uh, sorry, that's our last treble until two thousand one, which I mentioned earlier. So that, that's that's that big. It's usually how special. There, I mean, you think we're going for hope for fourth one tomorrow? It just shows you. I mean, these things don't come along that often. I know. It's, we're uh, living in special times. We've seen as many like in the last what three four years as. We did in the first hundred and twenty year history. Ah, yeah, we missed out <laughs> quite a few. You know. Yeah, 
Um, okay, so uh, move on. The next nomination I'm going to give you is actually 1988. And I, I debated between 88 or 89. Um, There's a couple of great Scottish Cup wins at the end of the 80s, but I'm going to go for 88 because it's part of the centenary double. Um, now, there's this talk about Celtic being a fairy tale club, and I was there the night we beat Barcelona, you know, the, the anniversary, of the, the birth of the club, and stuff like that. And it's moments like that are just so special. Yeah. And I think this probably qualifies for that as well. It, because it definitely does. We were we were underdogs that season mm-hmm. in the league. Yeah, you go uh, back to the summer of '87. Yeah. And they're spending a fortune. Uh, and, you know. Yeah. Chock full of England internationals and stuff. You know, as soon as. Revolution, yeah, it's spending heavily. We've lost a I couple of Green, stalwarts. You know, yeah. ah, you know, big, big players. Are Murdo McLeod, uh, yeah. So McLeod, and... McLeod, yeah, so you, there's a bit of, I guess, turnover at us. So they're just throwing money about. Um, but to win the league that season is, is, is magnificent uh, in the, the centenary of the club. And then to follow it up, obviously playing Dundee United in the final, I think. Dundee United, were they in the UEFA Cup final that year? As well, was it I think that it was the year before, I think 87. I yeah. might be wrong with that. I think it was 87. Yeah. They were in the UEFA yeah. Cup final. They certainly were a top team at that point, you know. Uh, clearly, yeah. I mean, so that, and obviously they'd won the league a few years before as yeah. well. So, um, you know, a really great Dundee United team. And they, they actually go 1 0 up in the final, Kevin Gallagher. Yep. Is, Relation to Patsy Gallagher. Yeah, he is, indeed. Yep. He should have skied it, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, he obviously went on to have a great career um, in the Premier League down south and that as well, Scotland International. But they go 1 0 up and then Frank, Frankie Boy, Maca, Maca Venny <laughs> gets a double. Um, so he obviously equalised, I think, 70 odd minutes and then last minute winner. Like scoring a last minute winner in a cup final. Right. When you're a boy who's Celtic fan, man. it's got to be. Pretty special, isn't yeah. it? For the player. And you, you've spoken about it. there's this proper handing in the sun. It is, I mean, it's just, that that's day, it's my, a... my overriding memory of that day. And I, and I can only, I don't remember, I was only six years old, so I'm not going to say I remember watching the game on TV, but I've got a vague recollection of the day itself yep. and just the glorious sunshine. And maybe I've just taken that from the TV, maybe I've just adopted that. But <laughs> you see the pictures on the TV and it just looks like you're in Bermuda or something. <laughs> it's like blue skies, there's not a cloud anywhere. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's how glorious. you picture cut final, yeah. isn't it? Because normally yeah. we kind of rain. Was well, that open um, stand yeah. at Hamden as well? There's no roof at that point in the Celtic, so it is so colourful and bright, and yeah, it's great. I must admit, I've I've often pretended I remember the eight and eighty nine games. In truth, I don't think I do. I think the first one I actually remember watching is nineteen ninety. I, I can't <laughs> um, remember eighty eight <laughs> as an event because you had the centenary, mm. yeah. and then you've got the garden festival as well. In Glasgow. Well, see, I remember the garden festival in. and the big um, the the the, the flower crest yeah. of, of Celtic, yeah. So I do remember that. So there's wee bits and pieces, I guess, in there, but I think it's maybe just clouded by watching yeah. footage of it. We shout out to the semi final that year as well, though, it's a cracking game against Hearts, and a 1 0 down scored twice in the last two minutes. All right. Uh, okay. Just to make the finals. That was that team's thing, wasn't it? You know, never giving up. You know, lots of last minute winners. Yep. Cool. So, yeah, so that's um, the Centenary Double 88 in that cup final. There's my, my second nomination I'm going to throw in. Um, move on. So, into the, the 70s and 80s. Um, we've. Again, you know, this is, 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 is some great moments in here. The 1971, obviously still part of the nine in a row team, uh, beat Rangers 2-1. Uh, 72, uh, beat Hibs 6-1, and Dixie Dean's ah, well, hat-trick. Yeah. <laughs> and you watch the highlights of that, it's just, it's, uh, it's just a fantastic team, that late 60s, early 70s. Team. Yeah, it really was. Uh, 74, 3-0 against Dundee United, 75. 3-1 against Airdrie. It's uh, almost a bit of a shame that we lost the 73 final to Rangers because they won five in a row if it wasn't for yeah. that. <laughs> well, we're actually in seven finals in a row. Yeah, um, yeah in that period. I mean, it's, it's a huge success. You'd always take that, I guess. <laughs> like five out of seven, getting to, to seven finals. So it is a shame we couldn't have put, I guess, more successive ones in there. But, I mean, that's quite a prolonged period of success. Yeah, well, I'm nitpicking there a lot about to criticise. One in nine league titles and a European Cup back. No, no, and a lot of European final. <laughs> that really sticks, doesn't it? That was. <laughs> yeah, I think if I could pick anything, it would be the Feyenoord game in 1970. Yeah. I'd want to change yeah. from that period. Um, but yeah, so 1977, another old turn final, uh, 1-0 against Rangers. And that's quite a, a defining moment as well. I think that's, that's Kenny Dalglish's last game. 77, yeah, yeah. When you yeah. see the television pictures again, there's Jock Steen and Ken Douglas sort of congratulating each other at the final yeah. whistle, and you kind of just, obviously with hindsight you're looking back and thinking, 
that was the kind of last moment of success for the, the two of them. Yeah, and it's I guess that it coincides with the the, the start of the, the new firm, Aberdeen Dundee United. A lot of Aberdeen success around that period, late seventies, early eighties. The Alec Ferguson team, obviously. Um, but we still, you know, we, we still have our moments. Um, at nineteen eighty, uh, the which is another riot, another infamous one. Uh, but we we won. It was only wasn't it? No, well, <laughs> I, I, I won't get into that. But uh, the yeah, be, we beat Rangers one 0 But the game is obviously famous or infamous for the riot which followed. But as is at that game, and they said he he stayed <laughs> until like the final whistle after extra time, and they said he could sense that something was happening. So yeah. he just got himself out there sharpish like that. So he did see Celtic win, but he just like basically yeah. I'm not hanging around for this because something's going to kick off here. It's it's kind of weird to. Uh, because I mean there'd been several old firm finals say obviously 77 even you know early 70s as well and you wonder something brewing that day who knows um, but as it's a kind of curious moment and it's obviously the reason we kind of get out of <laughs> game anymore and um, 40 years later yeah there's some great uh, I won't uh, ridicule myself with an Archie McPherson impression, but I think you do it. <laughs> <laughs> his commentary on the riot is just brilliant. <laughs> We're talking about another another wave now. <laughs> <It comes> just, <laughs> not that I'm advocating riot in no. football, but it's, uh, it's, it's. I don't think Archie McPherson expected to get up that morning and commentate on like police back charges and things. <laughs> no, I know it's. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's certainly worth watching it's, as a as a interesting point in Scottish football history. Uh, 1985, so that's that's our next success. We did lose a couple of finals in the early mm-hmm. 80s. I say that Aberdeen team, Aberdeen actually won three in a row under Fergie and a couple of doubles uh-huh. in there. So. The 84 final, we lost, but we probably looks to equalise when we had 10 men, so they put in a decent, a decent uh-huh. effort. And the, who was it they get sent off that day? Um, is it Aiken? I think it was Roy Aiken. Never a, sen- yeah. never a sending off. Still not happy. I remember you talking about this one before. Uh, it's we not, it's not about a sending off. Aye. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we talked about Aiken way back at episode eight, like a long time ago. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, you're, you're right. I remember you going on about that. Gordon Strachan was the one trying to get him sent off as well. <laughs> what happened to him? Uh, um, that's right. I remember that that kind of knitted together. A lot of fans hadn't really forgiven him for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but 1985, a real iconic moment from Davy Proven, uh, the free kick two one against Dundee United. Uh, actually, I think that that's the day as well that there's the that, that's the day the Protest about the poll tax is that that day? Is it? No, I think that's the 88, 88 one, isn't it? Yeah. That's 88. Mark yeah. Thatcher was that's Dundee United as well. Because yeah. the Celtic and Dundee United fans with the red cards. But McCarthy refused to shake hands with it. Yeah. <laughs> Just singing where you can stick your poll tax and stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> Good moments. Uh, but 88, as I spoke about, and 89 as well, which I mentioned, I could have picked 88 or 89. 89 is the first proper final I remember. Yeah. I remember we had a TV set in the garden with my next door neighbour. <laughs> <laughs> watch that outside. I'm going to be a lot of that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, one nil against Rangers is nice. Always nice to an old, uh, win an old firm final. Yeah, and that goal as well is the fact that it never should have stood as well. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. Throw in, it's clearly a Rangers throw. That's right. <laughs> you probably can just take it anyway. <laughs> the rest is like ah, I split on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so that that kind of rounds off the the eighties. I guess bringing us up to that ninety five moment you talked about, Mark. Um, I think we're going to have a next nomination from you, Barry. Yeah, well, we're going back in time to a final that you've already mentioned. So I just want to touch upon the 1965 final again. So, and you've like got the programme from that day? Well, I've actually got the programme, the actual official match day programme from 1965 that my oh, yeah. um, fiancé kindly bought me a few years ago. So this is framed in my house, but I brought it along with me today just to highlight a couple of things. Is it, yeah, you've been talking about this for a while and I've been curious to get a look at it. <laughs> no, we'll come to it, we'll come to it. <laughs> But I mean, the 65 final, as you said, Celtic hadn't won the Scottish Cup for 11 years at that point, which it's just such a long period of time. We were talking about the barren years before, of six years between 89 and 95, but yeah. to go from 54 to 65 and only really have a couple of League Cup successes, albeit one was glorious, yeah. isn't <laughs> it enough, you know, and it must have been a really difficult time mm-hmm. for a lot of the fans. And in 65, the Celtic board finally make a decent decision to bring in Jock Stein. More than a decent decision, I mean, the decision that's changed the club. Yeah. I mean, our league form that year was you know, was terrible. We ultimately finished eighth in the league. I mean, eighth in the league. Just, the can you get your head around that as well? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, certainly been in a few cup finals before that we mentioned, you know, 61, 63. But they'd never been able to get over the line. And it was just, it was so important for 
for Billy McNeil probably more than anyone else as the mm -hmm. captain of the club to finally get that first trophy because he'd been there for a few years and to, you know, to actually have some success yep. and that changed everything I mean first and foremost the game's an absolute belter I mean it's a 3-2 game Celtic come from behind twice Betty old you know yeah. guy grabbing two old and then McNeil himself grabbing the winner towards the end you know, cracking the header yeah it's a great moment uh, and from that point on I mean Celtic just do not look back <laughs> I mean it's I mean you can say we're finishing 8th in the league in 1965 and we're European champions within two years Yep. I, mean, I can't imagine anybody's ever yeah. done that it's, before. It's incredible. I mean, you talk about a fairy tale, isn't it? I mean, yeah. imagine 65 thinking two years' time, the guy just scored that one and goal is going to be worth in the European Cup. Yeah. I mean, it's actually something, it's like when you're playing Champman and you take over a team who are mid table but still in the Cup, and you win the Cup, next year you win the league, and then next year you win the Champions League. <laughs> but, but that actually That's happens. exactly what it is. It's pretty much the same players. <laughs> we we're, were struggling earlier on, just how good team was. Yeah. I mean, that, that team that lined up in 65, I think seven of the the ten outfield players, you know, played in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. So there's only a couple of couple of differences. And the other ones are like, you know, Yogi Hughes, who was basically a Lisbon line as well. Um Charlie Gallica, who's really a Lisbon yep. line. So I mean it's really the same team almost. Um I saw a cracking game and just pivotal in terms of Celtic actually becoming you no know, reborn and actually becoming successful. But the reason I brought in the programme <laughs> was just to point out a couple of things. So I love these old adverts and stuff in the programme, so, so cigarettes and stuff. And the inside page you've got a part on the referee, there's a good few hundred words on the referee. I don't know if anybody's, who's doing the refereeing tomorrow? Is it? Anyway, not well, sure. Say for instance it's Willie Collum, would you be interested in reading you know, 500 words on Willie Collum before no. the game? No, of course not. <laughs> it's um, and then further on, it goes on to list an itinerary of the actual Scottish day, Scottish Cup final day itself. So. If you're at the Scottish Cup final in 1965, you want to get in at least an hour and a half before the game. It's none of this turning up, you know, yeah. 30 seconds before the, the opening <laughs> whistle just to try and grab the huddle. So, event number one, uh, 1.45 to 2pm, the band of the Scots Guards doing their first performance for their pipes and drums. Event number two, you've got an invitation mile between the 2 o'clock invitation mile race under the SAA rules. So, I don't know what that is, so it's Scottish Athletics or something like that. Is that like a three-legged mile or something? Do <laughs> <laughs> you have rules <laughs> running a mile? <laughs> it's an invitation, so presumably these are proper athletes, just thought we'll just yeah. have a wee race around the park <laughs> before the game. Event number three, you've got a cycle race from the Deal Take the Hindmost by eight riders of the Scottish Cycling Union. So I guess this must have been round the running track for a while. Yeah. Event number four, gymnastics display and pushball match um, by the Scottish Amateur Gymnastics Association. Can I just say, I'd, I'd still win the pub. <laughs> well, you seem to actually know what you see the gymnastics. Nah. <laughs> and then event number five, half past two, you've got the school's relay race. So this is a boys medley relay race from the pupils of St Patrick's High School which I'm guessing is probably the one in Cope Ridge, and then Lindsay Academy, Kingsridge Secondary School and Air Academy. And then that's followed by the girls 4 by 110 yards <laughs> really race. And then <laughs> you've got a further performance by the Scots Guards, so you've got more pipes and drums. Right. And then event number seven, the teams come on, and then you've got the national anthem being played. Which I presume was probably God Save the Queen at that point. Father Scotland wasn't a thing at that point. Yeah, no. so, yeah. I don't know, that wouldn't go well down well. In these days, I wouldn't have thought it's not been nah. done for a while. <laughs> so. Do you think anyone went just to watch the pipe bands and left for the game? <laughs> Maybe that's for all those thousands so of people. Just there for the race. <laughs> race. <laughs> race. race over still, guys. Right. <laughs> I don't know who we got in. I don't know. Maybe we should bring these things back for the Scottish Cup. Still, I do. It wasn't when it seems to be Scottish Cup final day was an iconic moment in the Scottish football calendar yep. that they entertain people. You know, very much of its time. But maybe they could do that again. You know, make it a big event. Yeah. No, okay, no, cheers for that, Barry. I, I, I do want a proper look at that. It's a lot of old adverts and stuff, like punch magazines and stuff. Ah, there's like cigarettes <laughs> and alcohol adverts, which you don't see very much of. Join the days. army. <laughs> Join the army, that's in there. I've seen really old media from the 30s and 40s and like the equivalent of a hotline, you'd send a letter in. I used to go out with people's addresses, like Mr. Smith or you're such and such from Glasgow. You, have to do, like, you can't do that now. No, I know. You can just hide behind a Twitter handle these days. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Cheers for that, Barry. Uh, so, into the 90s, um, which, let's be honest, is, is not the greatest period. I feel like I've said that a couple of times already, yeah. but we only, I mean, one Scottish Cup in the whole decade mm. is, is pretty poor. I, think I went to the final in 99 against Rangers, that was a horrible day out. <clears throat> it, wasn't, it wasn't brilliant, was it? Um, but, you know, 
uh, it all changes, you know, as I mentioned earlier on, 2001, Martin O'Neill, or 2000, Martin O'Neill coming in, winning in 2001. Uh, Martin O'Neill did add another two, uh, so 2004, beat Dunfermline, 3-1, um, and then 2005, one nil against Dundee United. I think that, that 2004 game, that was Larson's last game. Uh-huh. Probably was a real... Larson is brilliant that day, two brilliant goals, just a world world class player. Yeah, we did a Henrik Larson special actually um, a few months ago now, so you, you'll still be able to get that if you look back for it. We picked out our ten favourite Henrik moments. I think I think that's well, quite hard one. to do as well. That's the thing. I've not made it. That was in the yeah. top ten, but it was it's hard to get ten. Yeah, right. Because there's just so many. It's like a top amazing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Might need to do a second version of that. I think. Um, uh, but yeah, so that. Larson's last game obviously had great great memories there um, the following year as well the 2005 Let's one just skip over this we won the Scottish Cup well it's an, I, I kind of want to touch on it because it's it, we knew Martin O'Neill was leaving and obviously we just lost the league helicopter Sunday Scott McDonald and all that which is terrible looking Scott McDonald give him his due he, he, he helped it out later on I'll so. be honest I don't think I've ever seen the 2005 Scottish Cup final no like I didn't see it live because it was in Australia so it was on like a different time but I don't think I've ever seen the goal the one it's, it's just something that I'm aware of that happened Alan Thompson, just, it? Alan yeah. Thompson. It, was, it was great for Neil to sign off for the trophy I mean, yeah. I was, I, despite what happened the previous year it was heartbreaking but it was amazing that Neil was got a proper farewell from the fans with success yeah I think so um, and that obviously brings a curtain down on the on the Lira, then into Gordon Strachan 2007 the 1-0 against Dunfermline do you know who scored that day? Uh, Dumbe wasn't it? John Joel Perry <laughs> Dumbe yeah it's one of these real oddities and <laughs> yeah, winning goal, 2007 Cup Final. Bit, it? Yeah, it's about five minutes to go or something. Ah, it was a nervy game. Yeah, it was a terrible game of football. But, uh, um, yeah, and then our, our next one's not till 2011, so you mentioned Lennon's words of, this is this is only the beginning. It's actually a real poignant moment for me, that one. So my uh, younger brother had actually recently been diagnosed with cancer. Happy to say he's made a full recovery, but I remember uh, I was with my dad and my brothers watching that game. Um, it was just an awful day at Hamden. No, I was just <laughs> chucked it down. Yeah, raining yeah, terribly. But yeah, it was just it was a kind of nice moment, I guess, for a lot of the family being together and obviously winning and say Lennon's words after the game were pretty mm-hmm. bouncing and stirring. You just felt like, you know, were you know, better times. Magnificent goal from Keith Young. That's my yeah, main it memory of was, it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it did feel at like the beginning of something to fair because we only just narrowly missed out in the league that year. And it's it was, disappointing that league, wasn't but it, it was good to get the Scottish Cup because they kicked us on the next. Which, well, we won the league the next year, albeit there were some strange circumstances surrounding it. But we would have won it anyway. We were, we were yeah. comfortably ahead, I think. So, um, but that's obviously the start of the the, the current nine in a row. Um, okay, and and then obviously Lennon added another one, and a couple of years later, three 0 the Hibs, Double B, Gary Hooper, another pretty common. Ah, that was a great day. I love that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good one, isn't it? 2013. Um, it's one of those tough things where you score early and you just enjoy the yeah. rest of the game. Well, yeah. remember it was a Sunday, annoyingly. You couldn't like, overdo it because it worked next morning. <laughs> <laughs> I did overdo it. Speak for yourself. It was a little staggered going between the morning. It was a common theme here. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, so um, that's, that, I guess that takes us up to almost modern days. Mark, do you want to fill in? You've got another nomination for yeah, us. Yeah, so I'm going back into the, the distant myths of Celtic history. So this is a Scottish Cup final in 1925, which is known as the, the Patsy Gallagher final. So it was played in April, 11th of April uh, 1925, played in Dundee. And it's part of Celtic football this game because of a goal that's scored by Patsy Gallagher. So Dundee taking the lead. Yep. And Patsy Gallagher was 34 years old at this point, one of the elder statesmen of the team. With already, I mean, he was already a Celtic legend. Oh, yeah. Point, I mean, yeah. yeah. He was a superstar. He was more than a legend. Yeah. I mean, he was yeah. not all over the world. So we're looking for a goal and Gallagher does his magic. You know, he's known as the mighty atom. <laughs> uh, gets the ball, dribbles into the box and he goes down and everyone's thinking, oh, good effort. But takes the ball between his legs does a somersault into the, into the Dundee goal to make it and sadly there's no footage all we've got left are like some cartoon no. drawings at the time there's, there's some great uh, illustrations of it like uh, and I've seen a kind of animated one as well step by step yeah. I don't you remember Carton Cole tried a summer goal <laughs> <laughs> didn't quite pay off it was the same idea yeah, that's not how I imagined that's a Gallagher one I must say I've tried a lot of crazy things in my time at fives but I've never tried anything like that but somersaulting into the goal <laughs> in, my, in my head I've got it that it's like a proper gymnastic somersault <laughs> when there's like a few triple twist and then like flies into the net. It's, it's yeah. probably, I can, I'm pleased that there is no footage of these things. Yeah, it was, you aye. want it just imagined in your head how you want it to be, you know. It's, um, it's mythical. Goal. Uh, it's, I mean, it, it must be amazing for the, for the people there and saw that goal. And then 
Uh, Celtic went to win 2 1. Jeremy McGorry scores one of his rare goals <laughs> <laughs> in that game. He <laughs> uh, plays with yeah. that. Uh, but yeah. I mean, he said Barry Patsy Gallagher was a legend, but at that point, that, that was his fourth Scottish Cup medal. He won his first one in 1911. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he was he's one of these guys that are still talked about. You know, we, we love skillful attacking players at Celtic, you know, they play the Celtic way. Um, it's a great story when uh, Patsy Gallagher made his debut in 1911. Uh, Jimmy Quinn had said to Willie May, like, that's going to be manslaughter if you let him play because <laughs> he was so small and we know the football batting was a bit more robust yeah, well, and, yeah. and rugged. <laughs> so I was doing a bit of research. Uh, Patsy Gallagher was five foot seven. So a club plus Sean Maloney's five foot seven. I think it gives you a, a five-year high. Five foot seven. Yeah. Um, I, I thought I had more than an inch on Sean Maloney. <laughs> 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 but it's Brian McLaughlin uh, was five foot four. He was one of our smaller players. So yeah. I think Brian McLaughlin used to run around that curtain basically as well as well as it was we had the hoop <laughs> <laughs> but Patsy Gallagher so I think in those days I mean 5 foot 7 it's not exactly small but I think when you're playing that type of football you know yeah. the muddy pitches the big boots oh, um, to be a skillful player in those days was incredible um, so sadly we don't have an awful lot of footage from that game in fact we've got no footage from that game we've got this kind of party style you know news it's, reports it's, uh, yeah it's funny when you look back at that kind of era because there's, there's a couple of things which have survived. Uh, there's like Glasgow Cup finals, which mm. is footage of. Because mm, yes. um, I think there's only, there's very few of Jimmy McGrory's 500 odd goals that are actually caught on on, on, on film. Um, it's, it's in some sense, it's disappointing, but on the other hand, will maybe add mm -hmm. to the. the I mean, it's really easy to have those sort of series yeah. because it's the quality of it, the frame rate, it's, it kind of feels. Like it's come from another world almost. It doesn't feel like it's hard to recognise it yeah. as proper yeah. football. Yeah. There's a good stamina job, I think, Patsy Gallagher and during a game when he's basically got kind of one leg thrown over the shoulder to try and hit the ball. So I think that's just got an indication of you know just how skillful he was. Yeah. And I think we touched on earlier, these guys are legends and because of their success and because of the hard work we can still celebrate, you know, the fact that we're adding trophy after trophy. So yeah. and you think I said Park Kids, you've got a lovely big banner goes around. You know, that is the story of the club, you know, the story of <laughs> more success. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Mark. Thanks for that. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll just kind of round off now. Just a, a couple more to go. We've got the, and I guess it's the last three, the last three years, um, and obviously the huge success we've had over over this recent period. Uh, Barry, you took us through the 2017 game. Lovely. Mm. <laughs> uh, a fantastic moment. Let's start again. Say. I'll start crying again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the following year, you know, 2018, 2-0 against Motherwell. I was actually in Dublin for my brother Stag do. Um, remember watching it in a bar and, Temple Bar, the Badass Cafe, uh, big uh, celebration, big huddle uh, in Temple Bar afterwards. I mean, that was proper yesterday. I mean, myself and Mark went down to the stadium for the old top bus Tom, that yeah, day, yeah, um, and it was just pandemonium, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, the only way you can describe it, pandemonium, I mean, it was, uh, I remember just running after a bus, I thought, I go in Manchester and after double down. They got up to Celtic Park and then there were smoke bombs going off and the people yeah. crowding the road and then they're trying to get the Celtic way and... Nobody really knew what was happening, no. and then there was like a wee presentation at the top, just outside the stadium. But yeah. we were, we didn't even know what was going on. No. You couldn't hear anything. <laughs> I, I just felt a lot of footage of it. Yeah, yeah. it's just that because at that yeah. point you're thinking a double treble. It'd never been done before. Yeah. Yeah. Look where we are now. You know, it's unbelievable. Um, but last year, which seems so long ago in so many different ways. <laughs> 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 yeah, but two one against Hearts and an Eddie double, the second, just an absolute peach. Uh, um, yeah, it was quite nervous because they took the lead yep, uh, but obviously right. they got that penalty straight away to, to get um, back and, and in terms. I'm sure we'd take the same again tomorrow oh, I don't know I hate going behind <laughs> in the cup final <laughs> uh, hopefully yeah well no obviously well ideally we would just have one of the Hibs ones I was talking about we'd score <laughs> yeah. early 1-3-0 that'll do yeah, that'll take that. <laughs> um, but yeah anything at all like that tomorrow we'll, we'll take and if Eddie can get in our couple of goals we'll get to to kick on to the boys tomorrow yeah a um, hard couple of weeks but it has been a tough couple of weeks, but uh, you know the, we've we've had such a prolonged period of success, particularly in the cups. It's very difficult to criticise getting knocked out of league cup when you've won what thirty seven. I had to end some point, so I'm just yeah. thankful point, that we've had this period of success. Yeah. Ever. When you look at this uh, thirty seven cup wins in a row, Ross County, St John's, and teams like this are you're buying average Scottish football sides. If you played Ross County thirty seven times in a row, of course you're going to get beat once. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. uh, is this kind of it was always going to come to an end. I think compounded with I mean, Europe's not been great this season. We had our uh, bad luck somewhat with um, some of the COVID stuff as well. But you know, hopefully, I'm not I'm not giving up on anything yet. So <laughs> wait and see where, where it goes. Um, okay, so that I guess rounds off our our history in the Scottish Cup. I think we're going to um, we normally end on a on a vote 
so we normally each kind of propose, well, what's our favourite moment? And then we'll have a wee round table vote. So, uh, Mark, do you want to, what's what's the one you're putting forward then? Okay, well, no, I can't vote for myself. Uh, not that I would have done anyway, but I think 65 is so important. You know, the Jockstein's first trophy. And just the period that comes from that is just incredible. Okay, cheers, Mark. Right. For me, um, I mean, it's difficult. There's some great memories in there, and ones that I was, you know, personally at, and then ones from you know, way back. The '95 Cup final holds a special place in my heart, simply because it's probably an age thing more than anything else. It's yeah. Because we had those barren years, because we were so young at the time, and we hadn't seen Celtic win anything really. Um, and also the circumstances of Fergus McCann coming into the club, and the club, you know been run properly for a change you know and, and buying players yep <laughs> I think 95 and for our guys of our generation is probably the most important one because I don't think the cup finals in 2001 actually happen unless we win something you know in that mid 90s period yeah. um, and that's why I love it so I'll kind of pick that as my, my favourite Scott okay. at the moment albeit the game itself is awful and I wouldn't advise anybody <laughs> to watch it again <laughs> but just watch the celebration yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm yeah, so obviously when we do this, the the rule tends to be you can't vote for your own one. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to side uh, well, with you both, I guess, with, with you, Barry, just to mark your nomination of 95. Sure, for largely the same reasons, I think it's it's very much the rebirth of modern Celtic. And it's the first one I really remember sitting, I watched the whole game and just getting properly into it and, and celebrating. When you see Tommy Burns, Paul McStay, Peter Grant afterwards, in tears and just how much it means yeah. to these these kind of guys um, it, everything about it is fantastic and you're right since then it's like a marker that mm-hmm. for the next 25 years um, but I remember I remember watching this over my grandfather um, <laughs> and I, I don't know where I get my nerves from seeing him and then he passed away unfortunately in April 95 mm-hmm. so it's kind of special that's really special that cut mm-hmm. through I felt as if yeah you know, yeah it was just that, that's what I love about Celtic is that we have our disagreements but we're all a big family yeah you know, and we've got so many special moments and today, you know, raising money for charity. Um, well, yeah, a group of people, the Celtic family. It is, yeah. There's been a lot, um, and you know, we've given you a wee episode today. We've covered a lot uh, in our podcast, and there's, there's just some great stories which you, you unearth going back over Celtic's history. And we've got a, a few more specials, a few more episodes we're going to be doing coming up, hopefully, uh, talking about more of these kind of things. But that that's, I guess, our Scottish Cup one today. Um, and I'm glad we've got a consensus on. So we're saying 95 is. I, I, I think a lot of people wouldn't agree moment. with that, but it's very much for guys of our generation. Uh, and and, and, and the way the club moved on from there, mm. that's that's why it's important. I mean, you could say you know 69 beating Rangers 4 0 was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You know, 2017 was brilliant. But they're, they're just wins sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes the significant. The significance of, yeah, of what yeah. you actually achieve and yeah. what the club does after it um, yeah. sort of pushes up. Okay, so I think we've we've got our conclusion then. Let us know if you think we're right or wrong. Obviously, you can get in touch with us on, on Facebook uh, or email celticaz at mail.com. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed that today. It's been good and it's been great to be part of this um, this wonderful weekend which Celtic State of Mind are, are putting together. Um, I think we were approaching 12k on the, the GoFundMe, so I think we've maybe just about hit that. Um, obviously, anything anyone can and give would be wonderful and anyone who's already donated thank you very much um rock talk as well our sponsors thank you very much for, for putting that up yeah, for do some good our work. session today we certainly do um all very much into mental health charities so um i really enjoyed that thanks mark thanks, yeah, Barry. Great fun. thanks, thanks everyone for listening as well yep. enjoyed it